When I was a schoolboy, the Latin teacher told me that you could always recognize an old Roman fortress town by its name. They were all called Chester or Caster, such as Manchester, Lancaster. And I had this vision of people walking around in togas speaking Latin. And this, of course, Chester, is my favorite. It's such a contrast from my seaside home an hour away. And you know, in Chester, if you want to know the time, you just need to look skywards. In this city of clocks, the most famous of all is this Eastgate clock, which was erected 102 years ago to mark Queen Victoria's Silver Jubilee. It's said to be the second most photographed clock in the world. The first is that one in London, you know? And this clock, was built just over a hundred years ago and it cost a thousand pounds that was a lot of money in those days and the firm that made the clock sent a winder every week every week this poor man walked the 10 miles to chester and back just to wind this clock and we want to have a look at this fabulous clockwork mechanism but guess what 12 years ago the city fathers decided to restore the clock and they've put in an electric motor what a heresy Nevertheless, it's a fine piece, and the only way to see this magnificent clock properly is from the street. If you want a clock like this for your conservatory or your back garden, I'm afraid it's not for sale. But I know a man here in Chester who's got a hundred clocks for sale, and we're off to see him now. It's Anthony Bennett, and he's at Phillips. Anthony, how many clocks have you got to sell today? We've got 40 long cases and I think probably 60 bracket mantle and probably about 20 wall clocks. Is that a good sale? Is that average? Yeah, it's particularly, no, it is particularly a big sale yeah. for us. Yeah. Phillips are uh, an international auction company. They were established just over 200 years ago. Our head offices are in New Bond Street, London, but we have a regional presence and this is the sale room in Chester and we've been here just under 20 years. Right. We deal with all types of people. Um, I always say you could deal with a dustman in the morning and a duke in the yeah. afternoon. It's right. very much that sort of business which makes it wonderful, all types of people. It's almost certainly a French clock, right. um, but could well have been retailed in England. It seems to have mercury in the pendulum. The reason it has mercury in is to compensate for climatic changes. Right. And how much will this bring? What, 1,500 quid or something? Probably 1,000 to 1,500, right. yeah. This is the clock art. This looks like a real good English clock. It's an English bracket clock made by Robert Wood of London. You see here, there's as much attention uh, being put into the back of the clock as the front with this wonderful engraving work. I bet this will bring twice as much as the French one, won't it? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. That's good. I notice you call them long case, but I, I always call them a grandfather clock. I think it's a, a popular nickname for a long case. Oh. And it describes uh, the different heights, as in grandfather, grandmother and granddaughter. Oh. I've noticed on some of these clocks we've been looking at, it says Tempus Fugit. Is, is that the name of the maker? <laughs> no, it's, it's the Latin for time flies, which basically was reminding people that the clock is robbing us of our, of our time. Ah, time is money. <laughs> Caveat emptor, time's robbing us. Procrastination is the thief of time, but I still found time to get a little carried away. An early Victorian uh, regulator clock. I don't like the sound of that, Anthony. It sounded a bit dull. Is it not an original hammer? And has this been repainted? What's that piece of cardboard doing there? Well, I didn't really come here to buy a clock. I only wanted to have a look what there was, but I've got so carried away with this one, I think we'll have a go for it. <laughs> and that's the beauty of Chester. Around every street corner, in every nook and cranny, there's a new discovery. There's temptation. There are so many delightful shops. Antique shops, junk shops, trinket shops, there's something for everybody. But my favourite is Farmhouse Antiques. 
Let's go inside and meet Keith Appleby. Keith, I don't know why they call this farmhouse antique. It looks like an Aladdin's cave to me. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been in business here? Oh, uh, over 25 years now. Yeah. In fact, it's the, the oldest antique shop in Chester. Man and boy. Yeah, man and boy. Yeah. And I see yeah. you do uh, top yeah. hats, picture postcards.